sing that with all confidence, amen, that the gospel can bring, that God's unconditional love can bring, amen, because he said that Jesus' name is Emmanuel, amen, which means God with us, amen. So you know that God is going to walk with you, amen. God wants to walk with you more than you want him to walk with you, amen, amen. So you can sing that, amen, with all boldness, with all confidence, amen. That I want Jesus, amen, to walk with me, amen. Come on and give God some praise. Amen. Come on and give God some praise. singing about anything God doesn't want to do already. Amen. 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 He already wants to be with you. Amen. Amen. First, give me honor to God and to his son, Jesus Christ, to the Holy Spirit that is in this place. Amen. Give me honor to, to First Lady Harris. Amen. To Sister Warren. Amen. Amen. To deaconesses in training. To deacon in training. Amen. To the members of New Life. To our guests this morning. Thank you so much. Uh, Sister Branch, amen, for coming by and visiting with us, amen, amen, give me honor to our musician, amen, this morning, God bless you for all that you continue to do to, for our media ministry, amen, for setting things up and organizing things, amen, amen, God is good, God is good, God is good. Can you feel the excitement of the season, amen, can you feel the excitement of the season, amen. Amen. Sister Ella's got us started off right. Amen. Yes. Amen. Setting up the atmosphere. Amen. Amen. To praise God for yes. sending his son, Jesus Christ. Yes. Amen. For coming here. Yes. Amen. Certainly this is Advent season. Yes. Amen. And we That's want right. to celebrate the coming of Jesus Christ Amen. from 2,000 years ago, as well as his second coming that is yet yes. to come. Amen. Amen. So we want to be ready. Amen. When he comes, amen. We want him to find us busy in the kingdom. Amen. And building up the kingdom. Amen. Because there's still much work to do. Amen. Amen. The Lord has a word for us uh, this morning. If you can turn with me in Luke, in your Bibles to Luke chapter 1. My prayer that all of your families are doing well, amen, that you're looking forward to some family time. Uh, Luke chapter 1, verses 26 through 38. Amen. Please uh, stand and have it ready. Everyone has access to the word of God, amen. Oh yeah, we forgot to ask you to check in. Check in on Facebook, let people know that you're here. Put this scripture and topic on there too. Amen. Amen. Tweet it out. What are the other channels? Uh, it's like I ask every Sunday. Instagram. I guess I need to start using Instagram. Snapchat. Y'all told me the vine is dead. I think I just about understand that one. It is dead. And that other thing. Uh, Periscope. Periscope. Luke 1, uh, verses 26 through 38. I'll be reading from the New King James Version. It's also on the wall. Amen. Now, in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, the virgin's name was Mary. And having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favored one, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. But when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and considered what manner of greeting this was. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. He will be great 
and, he, and will be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there will be no end. Then Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I do not know a man? And the angel answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore also the Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. Now indeed, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age, and this is now the sixth month for her who was called barren. For with God nothing will be impossible. Amen. Then Mary said, Behold the maid servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. Amen. Amen. That is the word of the Lord. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. And focusing on verse 37, for with God nothing will be impossible. Amen. Let's dwell on the topic for a moment. Living for God's possibilities. Amen. Living for God's possibilities. Amen. Amen. When I grew up in Washington, D.C. and in Chillum, which is in Hyattsville, Maryland, my brother and I looked forward to going to Granny's house in Dunn, North Carolina. Amen. Besides being glad to see family and eat Granny's great cooking, and being away from our parents for two weeks, we also lived to play with Eric and Mark, two boys our ages who lived right next door to Granny's house. Amen. We would cut branches from the trees and st string together and create bows and arrows while we were down there. Amen. And we would run around and get all dusty and do whatever we were, you know, what little boys do. Another thing we would do is find some bottle caps laying around in the street and in the yard, and we would get those bottle caps and put them on the, make arrowheads out of them. We would bend them around, get the stone, and bend them around the stick that we used as arrows so that we could put a little metal tip on our arrows and try to do some damage with whatever it was that we hit. Amen. I don't remember ever hitting anything. I don't remember ever damaging anything. But I remember having fun with those bottle caps. Amen. Amen. Since we didn't have any money while we were running around, but we had a desire to get some food from the store. You know what I'm talking about. Some penny candy or one of my favorites was a hostess apple pie and hostess cupcakes, amen, we would look around and find some empty bottles. And in that day, you could gather up some empty glass. They were, the bottles were glass, by the way, back then. Y'all know nothing about that. They were glass bottles back then. Coke, Pepsi, Crush, whatever it was. We would find them laying around the street. They had been discarded, but for us, that was the treasure. Yes. Amen. For us, we would gather up those empty bottles and put them in the case and take them on down to the corner store and redeem them for some money. Yes. Amen. And we would, we, the money burned a hole right in our hand because we had to turn right around and buy that candy and buy them snacks right there and there on the spot. We didn't, we didn't, we didn't have the mindset to save up for something bigger. Amen. Because after all, we were only going to be there for a couple of weeks. And we were there to have fun. Amen. It reminded me, though, that in the same way that people toss out those bottles and undervalue those bottles, people get tossed out today. They get tossed aside. They get ignored. People get undervalued in fact an entire generation seems to have come up without fathers and without proper models for leadership and ministry they were forced to make their own way and to dream up their own way of serving the Lord in between being shuffled from the father's house over to the mother's house and back to the father's house 
if they had if the father was even there maybe they went to grandmama's house and back to mama's house and and then back to grandmama's house but it seems like an entire generation has come up where now little children are asking god lord transform me into a smartphone because my parents spend more time with this phone with the smartphone than they do with me so maybe if you would just change me into a smartphone, maybe my parents will spend a little more time with me. I'm talking about people that feel undervalued, that feel set aside and feel like those empty bottles. But God, but God, God finds a way and finds value where we tend not to find value. Just like those empty bottles that people tossed aside onto the side of the road. And we as little boys saw some value in that. Amen. And people's lives today that get tossed aside, that get undervalued. Amen. God, God finds value in those people. Amen. God wants to reach out and to redeem those people. Amen. Back to himself. Amen. God wants to find a way, amen, and God has found a way, amen, to bring value and to redeem those people, amen, that others have given up on back into a right relationship with him. I tell you, God wants you, even in this room, amen, to come to him with a spirit of expectancy, amen. God has a plan for your life. Amen. God wants you to know, amen, that you can live for God's possibilities. Yes. That even when you've given up and you think things are impossible, yes. even when you think that things have gone and every avenue has been exhausted in your life, yes. that you've tried every single option and nothing still seems to work, I'm here to tell you, yes. amen, that God values yes. you. Amen. And that God can bring about his possibilities in your life. Yes, sir. Yeah. Amen. And because God is like that, he wants you to come with a spirit of expectancy. Amen. God wants you to live for God's possibilities in your life. Amen. Don't be satisfied. Amen. With the same old thing that's going on with the same old way of living yeah. with the same old way, the old way things have always been. Yeah. Amen, because I serve a God that is full of great possibilities. Yeah. Amen, that enables us to declare without any hesitation that greater is coming, that greater is coming, yeah. that greater is coming in this place. Amen, God wants you to live for God's possibilities. How many of you want some God-sized possibilities yeah. in your life? Yeah. I'm not talking about some weak possibilities. I'm not talking about thinking small just so you can make it over that goal. Yes. But I want to live a life that's full of big possibilities. Yes. That's got a big dream. That's got a big goal. Yes. So that way, I know that the only way we made it there was from God having his way. Yes. Amen. In our text today, amen, we come upon someone who was had no reputation someone who didn't have a noteworthy name someone who i would even say was just tossed aside and ignored was just living a regular life but as it says in verse 37 for with god nothing will be impossible amen nothing not some things not most things but nothing is impossible for God. Amen. Our text, amen, introduces the reader to someone who had no reputation ahead of time. Amen. We didn't read about this little girl ahead of time. We didn't read about this young lady until right here where Luke wrote about her. Amen. In fact, it was Luke was the only one of the gospel writers that recorded what we read, what we read today. Amen. Others came a little close. Matthew kind of summed it up in a couple of sentences. Amen. But And he focused a lot more on Jesus, of course. Mark didn't even mention the birth story at all. And John went all the way back to the beginning. 
It said, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God. Yeah. Luke is the only writer that kind of brings in a little bit of history of how we got to this point. <laughs> but I believe that when Luke's writing, when he's telling us all of this, he, his whole purpose in leading up to telling us about Zach, Zachariah and Elizabeth and telling us about Mary and Joseph was all to get to verse 37. For with God, nothing will be impossible. Amen. From this text, you can see that God is the one that's taking action throughout the text. Amen. As God's actions are not explained to us, we don't get a glimpse into heaven like the story of Job. We don't understand if there was a conversation going on ahead of time or not. All we do is see God in motion. Yes. We see God sending his angels, a, a, the, this particular angel, Gabriel, down as his messenger to deliver his message. Yes. God's actions, amen, is what we need in our lives. Yes. Amen. Just like in your life, amen, God can work it out in your life. Just like in your life, God can work out what seems impossible. Amen. God can work it out. In fact, I would suggest to you that God wants to work it out more than you want it to be worked out. God wants to work it out in your life more than you desire for God to work it out. Sometimes we get to the point where we're going through so many things. Amen. That we just want to curl up on our bed and say, Lord, just leave me alone right now. While I just have my little pity party right here. I'm just going to scroll up a little and just ignore the rest of the world that's coming down on me. But I'm telling you that the more impossible it seems, the greater opportunity God has to move in your situation. So that you and those around you will know that it was no one but God. Amen. That worked it out for you. Doesn't that get you, give you a different view? Amen. Amen. When you're going through that God has purpose. Yes. And the rougher it gets, that God is going to get greater glory yes. out of that rough spot in your life. Amen. I'm telling you, God can work out the impossible. Amen. But oftentimes we don't know why. Amen. Amen. You don't know why God is doing what he's doing. And I don't know why God chose Mary. Amen. But we're going to look at God's actions in this text. We're going to look at God's actions and why God, how God, what God did and how God is doing it. Amen. 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 To give us some insight, amen, into how God might act in your own life. Amen. That first action. Amen. That God did, that God did to in your life, amen, so that you can live for God's possibilities. Amen. Is in verses 26 and 27. Let's look at that. Now in the sixth month, amen, talking about the sixth month of Elizabeth's um, pregnancy, amen, this old couple that was like uh, Abraham and Sarah, amen, who had just given up, that just was barren, she was ashamed, uh, talking about Elizabeth, uh, was barren and ashamed, couldn't have a child. In that society, having children was your social security plan. Amen. Because when it came time to retire, you needed some children to come and take care of you. You needed some children to keep on working and, and, and come take care of mommy and daddy. In this situation, they had no one to take care of them. They were looking at a future of retirement just struggling and making it on their own. Because after all, Zacharias was a priest. He wasn't making any money anyway. Amen. Amen. Y'all know preachers don't make no money. Amen. Amen. That's right. Preachers don't make money. Preachers' wives don't make money. Amen. So here, Zachariah and Elizabeth, amen, had basically no hope but God. God showed up in the situation. I'm not going to go into the details. You can read it for yourself. Amen. But it's important to believe the messenger of God. Amen. 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 
Now in the sixth month, amen, the sixth month of Elizabeth's um, pregnancy, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. Amen. And from this, God, the first action is God sends a messenger. Amen. God sends a messenger. The angel Gabriel, amen, brings news, amen, of God's grace and God's mercy, amen, to Mary. Unlike what Gabriel did with Zechariah and Elizabeth, amen, Gabriel visited Zechariah in that case, amen, when Zechariah was at work in the temple. But in this case, the angel Gabriel visits uh, Mary. Amen. In a little town named Nazareth, a town of no reputation, a town of no importance. Amen. In Israel. Yes. Went to a virgin who was betrothed to a man. In other words, she was engaged to a man whose name was Joseph. Now, betrothal at that time was engagement was more serious than the way we take engagement in our society today. Amen. To be to, to to separate that betrothal, to break that, that engagement will require the similar process to a divorce. Things were arranged ahead of time. Families were had gotten together and Mary, you, you must realize that in this day that, that the marriage age was ten years old. Someone could be betrothed to be married as young as ten. But certainly, as a, by the time the person was a young teenager, 13 years old, uh, they were most likely betrothed and chosen and selected to already know the man that they were going to marry. Amen. So in this day, amen, some speculate that Mary may have been as young as 12 or 13 years old at this time. And here it is that the angel is showing up to give her some good news. Amen. Look at the way Luke wrote it down. Amen. God visited this virgin who was betrothed to be a man named Joseph, who was of the house of David. Period. And oh, by the way, the virgin's name was Mary. Amen. It's interesting to me that he had the name Joseph first. Even though Joseph really had nothing to do with the events that were about to occur. What Joseph did have to do with it was he had to stay betrothed to Mary. Now just think through the situation. Think through what Mary was signing up for. Think through what Gabriel was asking her to do. Not only to carry this child. Amen. But then to be looked down upon in the community because she was going to be pregnant before she got married she was already engaged Joseph would have been saying I didn't do it people would have been looking at her like well who did it she would have been saying well God did it really hmm. you want us to believe that something that's never happened before Happened to you. Who are you? That God would choose you. What makes you so special? Why do you want us to believe what's going on? Now, it's interesting here that this messenger from God came. I said God sends a messenger. When I thought about that, I thought about not only does God send angels. But remember Paul, the Apostle Paul, and the thorn he had in the side? Yeah. He said that was a messenger from God. Yeah. A messenger to remind him of what? That God's grace was sufficient for him. Yeah. Amen. That in his weakness, that's when God's strength was going to be shown. Amen. That messenger can come in different forms. Yeah. Amen. God sends a messenger. For Mary, it was an angel. 
For you, it may be some situation in your life. It might be a thorn in your side. It might be something that you're dealing with. Some physical trait, some, some mental trait. Something that you're dealing with. That you've gone to the Lord and said, Lord, get me out of this thing. Lord, I need, to, I need things to operate in a different way. But God might answer like you like he did Paul. And say, tell you and remind you that my grace, hallelujah, is sufficient for you. Sufficiency is that thing like being a fish in the ocean. Water is sufficient for the fish. Every time the fish goes to breathe, water is there. Every time the fish goes to bring to take another gulp, yes. the water is there. Yes, sir. Every time the fish goes over here or over there or way over yonder, yes. the water is there. Yes, the water is sufficient. That should remind us, amen, that no matter where it is that we go, yeah. that grace is right there. Yes. <laughs> no matter where it is, whether you're here or there or down yonder, yes. that grace is there. That God's grace is with you. Yes. That God has sent a messenger, amen, to remind you, amen, that God's grace is sufficient for you. Yes. Amen. God is worthy of all praise. Yes. God is worthy of all honor. Yes. Amen. So no matter what trials God allows you to go through, amen, you need to know that God has sent them as a messenger. Yes. Amen. To remind you to build up some patience. And to let patience have its perfect work. That you may be perfect and complete. Yes. Amen. Lacking nothing. Yes. Come on and give God some praise. Yeah. Come on and give God some praise that God sends a messenger. Yeah. But I'm glad that God doesn't stop there. Yes. Amen. Because the second action. Amen. That God did in your life. So that you can uh, live for God's possibilities in your life is in verse 28. Amen. Let's look at the verse. And having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favored one. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. Yeah. Amen. The second action is that God is with you. Amen. I know that sometimes you go through things that makes that hard to believe. Because sometimes we go through periods in our lives, amen, where our closest loved ones don't even want to be with us. Don't even want to be bothered. Don't want to listen to what we have to say. Don't want to spend any time with us. Just like that little child that wished she was a, a, a smartphone so that her parents could spend some time with her as much time as they spend on their smartphones. Sometimes we go through situations in our lives, amen, where we would think that the perfect God of heaven doesn't want to spend any time with us. Where we've slipped and fallen and gotten so dirty and wallowed in the mud so long that we know that God certainly doesn't want to be with me. But I'm here to remind you that Isaiah 7.14 said that God was going to use a virgin to bring about his son, and his son was going to be called Emmanuel. Yeah. And Emmanuel means God is with us. Yeah. I'm telling you, you can't lose sight of the fact that God is with you. Isn't it great to know that we serve a God that wants to be with you? Yeah. Isn't it good to know that we serve a God that loves you so much that he wants to walk with yeah. you? That he wants to run with you. That he wants to be with you wherever it is that you go. He doesn't mind going even in those places that you thought you had left them at the door. I'm telling you, God is still with you. Somebody said, uh-oh. I didn't know he was with me when I did that. Yes, he's with you at all times. God is with you. And he's with you to there in order to draw you back. Amen. That whenever you find yourself drifting off of the narrow road that he set up for you, God is with you there and calling you back. Yes. Reaching out for you to call you back. Y'all remember the, 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 the skit? Amen. The Jesus skit. Yes. 
Amen. Where the young lady had drifted away from her Savior. Things in the world had drawn her away and gotten her farther and farther away. But do you remember where Jesus was? Jesus was right there, still calling on her, still waving at her. And then when she made up her mind that she wanted to get back to God, that she wanted to get back to Jesus, Jesus was there and jumped in between all of the stuff that had pulled her away and protected her and gave her that space, amen, to come back, amen, and to be with him. Amen, amen. I don't know whether Mary, amen, had these types of challenges in her life, but I do know one thing. That all has sinned and come short of the glory of God. Amen. There's nothing in the scripture. Amen. That says that Mary was perfect and that's why she was chosen. Amen. The one that chose, that did the choosing was God. Because God had purpose. God sent a messenger and the message was full of grace and love. Even though it's not written out explicitly but it says here rejoice highly favored one the Lord is with you I'm telling you there are times in our lives where we feel like we're not worthy of the Lord being with you and that's a true statement but thank God you don't have to count on being worthy what you can count on is a God who is full of grace and mercy. A God who has unconditional love. A God who doesn't set up a formula that you have to meet certain things. Amen. A God who loves you no matter what you've gone through. A God who wants to be with you. Amen. Amen. No matter where you find yourself. Amen. Today is the day. Amen. To turn it around. And to surrender all to God. Amen. So God sent his messenger with a great message that God is with you. And that set it up for God's third action. The third action that God takes. Amen. So that you can live for God's possibilities. is in verses 34 through 37. Let's read. Then Mary said to the angel, how can this be? Since I do not know a man. And the angel answered and said to her. The Holy Spirit will come upon you. And the power of the highest. Will overshadow you. Therefore also. That Holy One. Who is to be born. Will be called the Son of God. Now indeed Elizabeth your relative. Has also conceived the Son in her old age. And this is now the sixth month for her who was called barren. For with God, nothing will be impossible. God's third action is God plants possibilities. God plants possibilities. The more impossible the situation that you're in. I'm telling you, God plants possibilities in your life. The more impossible the situation, the more that people are going to know that God worked it out in your life. Amen? Amen. 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 The more impossible that it seems that I'm going to get out of this thing. I'm telling you, the more that people are going to know that God was the one that worked it out in your life. Amen? No matter how desperate you might get, no matter how empty the wallet might be. No matter how empty the checking account might get. No matter how many doctors have walked away shaking their head saying it's only a matter of time before you'll be dead. No matter what it is, no matter what extreme the situation is. I'm here to remind you that God plants possibilities in your life. That God is working it out in your life. That God is going to take it just like he took Mary's situation. That Mary was asking some serious questions. Well, Lord, this has never been done before. I don't know a man. In other words, I haven't been with a man. How can this be? I understand enough to know that that's the way it works. 
But the angel answered and said to her that the Holy Spirit is going to work this thing out. Yes. That the power of the highest is going to overshadow you. Yes. Therefore also the one that's going to be born is going to be called the Son of God. Yes. In other words, God the Father is going to be the Father. Amen. God is going to work it out. And now indeed, just to make sure that you know the power of God is real. If he did it for one, he can do it for another. Yeah. Verse 36, Gabriel said, Now indeed, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. Now this is the day and time before sonograms. Yeah. This is the day and time before they could do some type of, uh, uh, what's it called? Okay, in vitro. Well, I was looking for the test. What's the, the amnio? Oh, yeah, yeah, that thing. Before they could determine the sex through all these other modern means. Amen. But the, God sent a messenger to Mary that even knew the sex of the baby. Amen. And told her that Elizabeth had, had conceived a son. And as if that wasn't enough in her old age. Mary already knew that Elizabeth was the shame of the town. Mary already knew that her cousin was already looked down upon, was already trying to figure out well, how are they going to get support after they retire. Since they didn't have any children, how are they going to make it? But look at God. God letting her know. When before this time, only Zechariah and Elizabeth knew. And now that same angel is delivering the good news to Mary. And Mary said, and this, by, by the way, it's in the sixth month for her who was called barren. For with God, nothing will be impossible. I'm telling you, God can plant possibilities in your life. Whatever it is that you want God to do for you. I'm telling you, if you would do what Psalms 37 verse 4 says, and that is to delight yourself in the Lord. And God will give you the desires of your heart. I tell you, if you just look to the Lord and say, Lord, what is it that I should be desiring? God will move you from desiring that nice car to desiring a closer walk with him. God will move you from desiring that big house to desiring to serve somebody. God will move you from wanting all of this, from wanting this and wanting that. Amen. And wanting all these gifts under the tree. Amen. To want you to, to, to move you to desiring to serve him and to serve him only. Some of you are saying, but my paycheck is running out. My, 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 my resources are running thin. I don't know how things are going to work out. Yes. To me, it seems impossible. Yes. But I'm here to tell you that God can make a way. That God can make things that seem impossible possible. That God can plant some possibilities in your life so that you can give birth to God's plan coming out of your life. That you might birth some of God's possibilities coming out of your situation. That God can take your rough spots and smooth them over. That God can take those valleys and raise them up. That God can take those mountains that are barriers and bring them down low. I tell you, we serve a God of great possibilities. We serve a God that's going to fill up these pews one day. Because we said that greater is coming, that greater is coming, that greater is coming in this place. We know that we serve a God that is full of possibilities. And God is going to continue to plant his possibilities Right here in New Life Missionary Baptist Church. So that he might use us to birth his, his will out into the streets. That we might birth his way out into the streets. That we might birth his will out into the streets. Amen. That people that come in through these doors will be blessed. That they will experience God in a new way. That they will experience God in a way that they can see the grace of God. Moving with unconditional love. That they'll feel his unconditional love flowing out of our lives. Yeah. Through our smiles that we give to people. Yeah. Through the handshakes that we give to people. Yeah. Through being con genuinely concerned about what people are going through. 
I tell you, God has already sent a messenger, amen, that tells you, amen, that through God's grace, amen, that you have been chosen. Amen. God has already reminded you, amen, that you that God is going to use you. Amen. That God has a way of, 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 of using you for his purpose. I tell you, when God points his possibilities in your life, amen, then you can respond like Mary did in verse 38. Then Mary said, behold, the maidservant of the Lord, let it be to me according to your word. I tell you, how many of you have a let it be to me according to your word and your spirit? Amen. That you're ready to allow God to use you in whatever way that he chooses to use you. I tell you, where do we have that example? We have that example through the one that was born through Mary. And his name is Jesus. As great as Mary is, she's not as great as Jesus. Jesus is the one that we came to celebrate during this season. Jesus is the one that was that was birthed out of God's possibilities. Jesus was the one that came and lived among men and showed us how to live and to treat each other. Some folks got mad at him. Some folks got angry at him. Ain't so angry that they sent him to the cross and nailed him up on the cross. But I'm glad that even then he had purpose. As bad as things seemed, as many people that walked away from Jesus, as impossible as the situation seemed, that the Son of God was hanging up on the cross, that he was being taunted to come down and demonstrate his power. He stayed up on that cross because of the love that he has for you and for me. And I'm glad this morning that he stayed up on that cross. And that he died upon that cross. Things really seemed impossible at that moment. Here the Messiah, the Son of God, had died in front of people. Where was God's power now? But I'm glad that it didn't take long. Because on the third day morning, he got up with all power in his hands. Changing what seemed impossible to the possible. Something that had never been done before. Isn't it good that we serve a God like that? That is ready to do some new things in our lives. That is ready to try out some things that haven't been done before. What he needs are some folks that have a, I'm willing to be used by you, Lord. That have a yes, Lord, in your spirit. That have a spirit of great possibilities. That have a spirit of high expectancy. That Lord, I want you to use me with the power of your resurrection. Lord, I want you to use me with the power of your grace. Lord, I want you to use me with the power of your love. I want you to bring it about in somebody else's life. Lord, I want you to use me and let your light shine through. Come on and give God some praise. Come on and give God some glory. You can live. You can live for God's possibilities. Because we serve a God to whom nothing, nothing, nothing is impossible. Come on and give God some praise. Come on and give God some glory. Because Jesus got up on that Sunday morning. Amen. He offers to you eternal life. Amen. You may be here and you realize that you never received Jesus Christ as your Savior. That you've just been going to church and then realize that Jesus loves you that much. You have the opportunity today to receive Jesus Christ as your Savior. Amen. Is there one today? It's very simple. Say, Lord, I'm sorry for sinning against you. Lord, I'm ready to turn my life around and for you to be the Lord and Savior of my life. I believe that God raised you from the dead. Is there one today? Is there one today? Yes, yes, yes. 
Man, you may be looking for a church home, amen, where you can continue to grow and be fed from God's word, where you can fellowship with like-minded believers and continue to build up your spiritual life in the Lord so that you too can live a life with a mindset of being focused on God's possibilities, amen. Is there one that would like to join new life I mean new life your church home is there one today is there one today Savior, 